All right, welcome to everybody who's trying to learn algebra at home. Uh, today what we're going to be covering is combining like terms with negative coefficients. So what we're going to be working on right now is a couple of just basic algebra concepts here. So if you want to just write these in your journal, that'd be great. We're going to have to kind of go over what x plus x is equal to, what x minus x is equal to, what x times x will be equal to, and what is x divided by x, as long as x does not equal 0, because you can never divide a number by 0. All right, so here we go. These are just concepts that you need to understand. So x plus x. How many x's do you see? That's a total of 2x's. These are like terms, so you can combine them. x minus x is 0 x times x is the same as saying x to the power of 2, or x squared. And any number or x divided by x is 1. So if we were to substitute a number, any number for x, here's what it would look like. If I said, what is 2 plus 2? Well, that's the same as saying 2 times 2, because 2 plus 2 is 4, and 2 times 2 is also 4. So if I said x was equal to 2 over here, you can see 2 minus 2 is always going to be 0. If I say what is 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is the same as saying 2 squared, and 2 squared is still 4. And last but not least, what is 2 divided by 2? 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this concept right here is what we're going to be dealing with, is like terms. I can add x to another x and call it 2x because they are exactly alike. All right, so right here our term is k. So we can add and subtract k's because it's the exact same letters, the exact same term. All right, so if I have a k, a negative k, and I'm adding the three positive k's, here's another way of looking at it. Ready? I've got a negative k, and I'm adding it to 1. 2, 3, positive k's. Well, what happens when you take a negative k and you add it to a positive? They zero out, and you're still left with 2 k's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an equivalent expression right there. I'm put 2 k right there in the box. 2 k. I'm going to use the letter k. So when you're doing this, it's going to be really easy. All you're looking for is things that are exactly alike that you can combine. So right here we have 8 t's. Looks like we're trying to add it to negative 4 t. And then we have a positive 1 being added to a negative 6. So let's do these separately. Ready? We have 8 t's, and I'm adding it to negative 4 t. So we just look at the coefficients, the number in front of the letters. Since these are alike, we can just combine these. 8 minus 4 is 4, 4t. And over here we have negative 6, and we are adding 1. So this has 6 negatives, this has 1 positive. If we add these together, we're left with negative 5. So our expression that we are going to write in here is 4t minus 5. That's going to be the algebraic expression. Now, when you guys are trying to add negative and positive numbers together, here's my suggestion. Think of money. Negative is money that you owe. Positive is money that you have. So if you owed somebody $6, but you paid them back $1, you still owe them $5. That always helped me when I was learning how to add and subtract integers. So, hope that helps. I've got to type in a 4T. I'll put a minus 5. Sounds like my grilled cheese is ready. Better go for a second. All right, moving forward. This will be the last one we do out of this section. This is pretty easy, so you guys should be able to handle this. I'm going to go ahead and find some things that are alike. So it looks like I have a negative 3k. Um, we, and then we have a couple of constants. We've got a negative 8, a negative 2. But something you have to be mindful of is this negative right here. We have minus times a minus. So we have negative 3k. A negative times a negative is going to be a positive. I'm going to put a plus 8. I'm going to put plus 2. So 
the only like terms you have right here are this positive 8 and this positive 2. So the expression that I'm going to write is negative 3k plus 10. Right, go ahead and write that in. Let's type it in. Negative 3k plus 10. All right. So just be mindful. Whenever you see a negative right next to another negative in parentheses, make sure you cancel those to make them positive. All right, here we go. Let's go to the next section, which is, um, let's see here. Here we go. Combining like terms with negative coefficients and distribution. So it says simplify to create an equivalent expression. So that's what we're going to do right now. So now we've got the distributive property we have to use. Eight parentheses ten minus six q plus three parentheses negative seven q minus two. So whenever you're distributing, we'll just do like the property of distribution up here. We'll put a parentheses b plus c. When you distribute, you multiply it to both numbers, or however many numbers are inside the parentheses, make sure you distribute the number that's on the outside throughout the entire expression that's on the inside of the parentheses. So a times b is ab, and a times c is ac. And that would be your expression. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to hope, go ahead and use the distributive property. We're going to do 8 times 10 and 8 times negative 6 cubed. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times negative 6 cubed is negative 48 cubed. We're going to distribute 3 to both numbers inside the parentheses. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Put q next to it. Got to make sure you bring that down. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So now what we need to do is just look for like terms. So this 80 right here is going to be combined with this minus 6. So it's going to be 80 minus 6. And this negative 48q is going to be combined with this negative 21q. So let's go ahead and do the easy one first, get it out of the way. Move over here a little bit. If I have 80 and I take away a 6, that's going to leave me with 74. If you remember, you, know, you could borrow and do that. If you didn't know that, would be the old borrowing method. The other one might be a little bit harder for some of you. If we have negative 48q and I'm taking away 21 more q's, these are both negatives. Now, this is not a negative times a negative. You're just adding these together. So think of it as you're just combining these together. We're not multiplying, so it's not a negative times a negative, it's a negative plus another negative. So if you spent $48 and you spent $21 more, now you're going to be spent $69. So you'll notice right here I'm going to have negative 69Q. That's going to be what we're going to lead with, and then we're going to put plus 74. And that's the answer, that's the expression we're going to be looking for. Now notice this, choose one answer. So I've got to make sure I choose that answer and only that answer. So if I can scroll down, there it is. Negative 69Q plus 74. All right. Let's go and do a couple more of these. So make sure as we're doing it, not just watching me do the math, make sure you're pausing it and writing the math down. That'll certainly help you. I'm going to write it, and as I'm writing it, you write it. 2 parentheses 3y plus 6 close parentheses minus 3 open parentheses negative 4 minus y close parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2 and I am going to distribute it to the 3y and distribute it to the 6, which means multiply. So 2 times 3 is 6. And there's plenty of number. You still have the y next to it. So 2 times 3y is 6y. And 2 times 6 is 12. And we're done with that. Now, what I'd like to do on the next one is I, instead of saying 
minus 3 and then just multiplying the 3 to everything. I'd like to just take this negative and distribute that negative into both terms. I think it makes my life a little bit easier. Otherwise, then you're going to have to subtract them anyways, and it takes a little bit more time. So whenever I have a minus sign right here, a subtraction sign, I like to take it and multiply it into the expression. So a negative times a negative is a positive, so I put plus 12, because 3 times 4 is 12. And a negative times a negative is another positive, and 3 times y is 3y. So now I need to search for some like terms. So right here I have a 6y, and I have a 3y. And when I combine those like terms together, I get 9y. And then over here, I've got a 12, and I'm adding another 12. And 12 plus 12 is 24. So the answer that I'm going to be searching for is 9y plus 24. That's the answer I'm going to be searching for. 9y plus 24. There it is. Okay. Now, if for some reason you got one wrong, okay? If you got one wrong, just click down here where it says see a step-by-step -step solution. And you can go down here and it'll kind of show you step-by-step. -step. Now, I won't talk you through it. But it'll at least kind of show you what they what they did to solve the problem. All right, and I'll highlight the like terms. So they highlighted the like terms together. All right, last one, and we'll move on to the next section. First thing I like to do is I like to just write everything down, nice and neat, right over here. Give me a little workspace. Got negative five parentheses, the sum of three p and three plus 9, open parentheses, negative 7, plus p, close parentheses. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do our distributive property. We're going to take this negative 5, and we're going to distribute it to both terms. And then we're going to take this positive 9 and distribute that to both terms. So negative 5 times 3p is negative 15p, and negative 5 times a 3 is negative 9 times negative 7 is negative 63, and 9 times p is 9p. Now what I'd like to do is once I've distributed everything, now I search for things that are alike. So there's a negative 15p, and I can totally add that to a positive 9p. And then right over here, I've got a negative 15, and I can totally add that to a negative 63. So I'm just going to line them up. I got negative 15p plus 9p. When I add those together, I get negative 6p. Why? Because there are more negatives than there are positives. How many more negatives are there than positives? There's six more negatives, so that's why it's negative 6p. All right, and here we go. Negative 15 minus 63. When you're adding negatives together, it's just, you're just adding them together. Because these are negative, these are negatives. You spent $15 and you spent $63 more. Dollars. Holy cow, you spent $78. And there you have your expression. Negative 6p minus 78. And that's going to be my answer choice B. And that's all you have to do. So what are the two steps? One, distribute. Second, combine like terms. So those are the two steps. Number one, step one, you need to use the distributive property. So just, I'm just going to put distribute. Two, combine like terms. And that's all. All right, let's see what we go. got here. Um, I already did that one. Put my expressions. Ah, here we go. Combining like terms with rational coefficients. All right, so if you were to do this by hand, personally, I like using uh, mixed numerals and fractions if you were to do it by hand. But we're going to do it by hand. We're going to do it in the calculator. So if I had four parentheses, 1.75y minus 3.5, and then I was going to add 1.25 y to that, and I was going to distribute. Honestly, I probably wouldn't use decimals. I would change it into a, an improper fraction. So 
Here's a couple of things you could do by hand. Ready? 1.75 is the same as saying 1 and 3 quarters, because 3 quarters makes 75 cents. And if you want to change that into an improper fraction, 1 times 4 is 4, plus 3 is 7 over 4. There's your mixed numeral. If you remember doing that in elementary school, where you multiply and then add. Okay. So 1 times 4 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Four. I'm going to use that 7 over 4. Here we go. 4 times 7 over 4 y minus, now 3.5, but 3.5 is the same as saying 3 and 1 half, which is the same as 3 times 2, 7 over 2, but minus 7 over 2, plus, and then I have 1.25. 1.25 is the same as saying 1 and a quarter. If I do that process, multiply and add, that gives me 5 over 4, but plus 5 over 4 y. Now when I distribute, it's actually going to be a lot easier. Like I don't see how it could be easier. Well, here's what, there's a couple ways to look at this. 4 times 7 is 28, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. Or you could say, hey, look, 4 goes into 4, a total of 1 times, they go into each other, so you're left with 7. So that's another way of looking at it. All right. Over here, 4 times negative 7 is negative 28 divided by 2. 28 divided by 2 is 14. Another way of looking at it is 2 goes into 4 a couple of 2 times, and 2 times 7 is 14. So you can always cancel out. If this number in the denominator goes into this number that's in the numerator, you can cancel those out. So now, we are going to add, I'll just add, actually I didn't have to change that, I was going to add 1.25y. So now I can add these together, and if I have 7 and I'm adding 1.25, it's going to give me 8.25y minus 14. And that's what I'm going to type in. Technically, this should allow you to, to use a mixed, um, mixed numeral. So if we kept this, we kept this as 28 over 4y, and I wanted to add 5 over 4y. Technically, I should be able to type in 33 over 4y minus 14. So both of these mean the exact same thing. But what we're going to do, we're going to get the old calculator here. I'll show you how to use the, show you how to use the calculator. So one way to do it is you can do 4 times 1. 0.75. Press enter. And you get so you get seven. And then if you add that to 1.25, you can see you get 8.25. Hit the math button. Change that to a fraction. You can see it's still 33 over 4, which is the same as what we got right here. So technically, either one of these should be correct. So we I'm, we're going to choose one. So let's see which one we're going to choose. You know what? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. And, so let's risk it. 33 over 4. Y. And then I'm going to put minus 14. Let's see if it accepts it. If I get it wrong, then we'll know, hey, oh, just use the decimal. Yeah, it accepted it. Let's see the see step-by-step -step solution to see if they use the decimal. See, they, they kept it in decimal. But even though I didn't keep it in the decimal, they still accepted the um, improper fraction as the correct answer. So they just multiplied it. They didn't change anything to, to fractions like, like we did. Okay, But if I had to do it by hand, that's probably what I would do by hand without using a calculator. But obviously you have access to a calculator, so you should be able to, to do that without any issues or problems. All right. So here we go. All we're going to do is combine some like terms that have decimals. All right. So if you have a calculator, you can use a calculator. All I'm going to do right here on this one is just highlight the like terms. I'm not going to rewrite this one because there's not a whole bunch to do. We've got 3.4, and it looks like we need to take away 1.3. And then we've got a negative 2.8d, and we're adding a positive 2.8d. So that's going to be pretty easy. We've got 3.4 minus 1.3, and we have negative 2.8 times d. 
we're adding 2.8 times b. Hopefully you can see these are called a zero pair. Right? These are additive inverses. They cancel each other out to zero. And here, pretty easy. Just 4 minus 3 is 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So we're left with 2.1. So that's all I'm going to type in. It's just 2.1. Ooh, now we've got fractions. Yay! Now, when you're adding or subtracting fractions, they have to have the same denominators. Let's go ahead and highlight the ones that we have to combine together. And then we'll kind of go over how to do it by hand, and then we'll put in the calculator to test if we did it correctly. Okay? So here we go. We've got negative 2 thirds v plus 1 third v. That's going to be easy because they have the same denominator. Now, this one's going to be a little bit trickier. We've got negative 6 fifths, and we're adding 4 fifths. So that's going to be a little bit trickier. So let's go and take care of the easy one first. Negative 2 thirds v, and we are adding 1 third of v. All right, so it looks like we got two negatives and one positive, so that's going to leave us with negative 1 third of v. All right, so we're done with that. That's what we're going to write right here, negative 1 third v. Now we're going to take negative 6 over 5, and we're going to add 4 over 15. Now you'll notice right here, these aren't the same denominator. So what is the least common multiple between a 5 and a 15? Well, if we do multiples of 5, it's 5, 10, 15. Well, guess what? That's our least common multiple. So we're going to keep the positive 4 15ths, and then we're just going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3, that's going to give us negative 18 over 15. Now we have the same denominator, so now I can take the numerators and combine them. So we have negative 18 plus 4, that's going to give us negative 14 over 15. And there you go. Now I'm just, that's going to be my final answer right there. All right. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to type that in carefully, nice and neat. So we got, got a negative, we did a 1 over a 3, I'm going to type in a B, we said minus, and then it was 14, oh not 15, 14 over 15. And that's what you need to do, all right? So remember, now if you didn't know how to do that by hand, you still have a graphing calculator accessible to you. So you still technically could take, I'll clear this out, give you negative 6 divided, oh, negative 6, negative 6, there we go, negative 6 divided by 5, and add 4 divided by 15, and you're going to get a decimal, but you can hit the math button and press enter twice. Now, another way of adding fractions together is actually to use the feature on your graphing calculator, alpha y equals n. And then you can type in negative 6 over 5. All right, and then plus, then once again do alpha y equals n. You do 4 over 15. And then, it, because I have it in fraction form in the graphing calculator, then it'll keep it in fraction form. And you can see there's our negative 14 over 15. So you can use your graphing calculator, you just got to make sure you're combining the correct terms. Alright, so here's the last, the last section, dealing with equivalent expressions. This is probably going to be the most challenging, because what we, what we have to do is we have to evaluate this, and then we have to evaluate each of these and see which of these actually matches this one. So this one's going to require more work um, for you, but it will really test your ability to understand if things are equivalent or not. So right here, we have 2 times b plus 3c. So the first thing we got to do with this one is just use the distributive property. 2 times b is 2b. 2 times 3c is 6c. So what we're looking for is, can, can we get all of the other expressions to equal this? So right here, if I multiply these together, I get 3b plus 6c. And you can clearly see that these are not the same. So I'm not going to choose that answer. Over here, 
Let's add some like terms. What is b plus another b? b plus b is 2b. And 3c plus 3c is a total of 6c. Well, guess what? So far, this expression matches this expression. So these, so far, that's one of them right there. That would work. Let's check this one out. We have two. I know, yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. Every time I say to be, you're thinking what? Or not to be. That's the question. But it's what? 2 times b is 2b. And 2 times 3c is 6c. And voila. Looks like we have two expressions that match. So I'm going to select, it says choose all answers that apply. So I actually have to select two answers in order to get the question right. So i got to select this one and this one. But I'm not going to select this one because that's not right. Oh, here we go. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this expression right here and combine everything and see what it looks like. So I've got a j plus another j, and that's going to give me a total of two j's. And I'm adding 2k, so I put plus 2k. So here we go. There's our expression. We're trying to see can, which one of these expressions matches this. Well, 2j plus 2k is not equal to 2jk. And I'm not joking. All right? I'm not just kidding about that. All right? it's, they're not equal. All right? Let's check this one out. I have a 2 times a j. I've got a 2 times a j, and I've got 2 times a k. Well, what's 2 times j? 2j. 2 times another j is a total of 2j's, and 2 times k is 2k. Well, guess what? These match, but 2j plus 2j is a total of 4j's. Oh, man. That does not match this one right here, so I'm not going to choose that. So if those two don't match, and this answer says none of the above, I'm going to choose the answer none of the above. All right? All right, we'll do a couple more, and then we'll call it, we'll call it a day. All right? So here we go. Which expressions are equal to, or equivalent, equivalent means equal to k divided by 2. What does it mean if a number is divided by 2? Just so you know, that's always going to be equal to what's known as half of the number. So k divided by 2 will be equivalent to half of k. If you don't believe me, let's just take, let's make k, let's say k is, let's make it easy, 10. All right, so what is 10 divided by 2? Hopefully you know that's 5. And if I, if you were in my class, I said, hey, what's half of 10? Hopefully you would tell me half of 10 is 5. So you can see that these expressions are equal to each other. All right. So let's take a look at this real quick. Which expression is equal to k divided by 2? Well, it's not k minus 2. And another thing you could do, you could substitute numbers to see if it works. So let, we, we used a 10. So what is 10 divided by 2? 10 divided by 2 is 5. Well, what's 10 minus 2? 8. That's not it. What's 2 divided by 10? That's 1 over 5. That's not it. What's half of 10? Half of 10 is 5. That's it. And that's the equivalent expression. So k divided by 2 and half a k, they mean the exact same thing. Okay? All right. Choose two answers. Oh, wait. I guess I need to scroll down. Oh, <laughs> guess I should have scrolled down. Good thing they had it there. Okay, I apologize. It's, we have one, two, three, four, five answers to choose from. Good thing they said, hey, you're almost there. They didn't just automatically count me wrong. All right. So k divided by two means obviously k divided by two. There we go. I was like, all right, man, this video is getting long. It's almost thirty minutes. So let's go ahead and do a couple more, and we'll call this video done. Which expressions are equivalent to 4b, which means 4 times b, which is also the same as b plus b plus b plus b. That's one way of doing it. So let's go ahead and combine all these like terms and see where we are. All right. So right now here we've got, we've got to use the distributive property right there. We've got a b plus 2 times b, which is 2b. 
All right, and then we have two times two b, which is a total of four b. Now you could have added these together and have done two times three b and gotten a total of six b. Well, this is a total of seven b's if you add all these b's. Now, if you're wondering how in the world did I get seven, because technically, if you don't see it in front of a letter, that number is one. It's not a very good one, but that's one b. All right, so there's one of them. So you got to make sure that coefficient's a one. So we got total of seven b's. Here we got three b plus one b, which is a total of four b's. So that matches. Then we have two times two b, which is also four b. So we can clearly see that these two do match up to 4b, but this one is 7b, so it doesn't work. All right, here we go. Last one. Let's go ahead and use the distributive property. 3 times 4h, which is a total of 12h, and 3 times 2k, which is a total of 6k. Now, you may have had an elementary school teacher one point in your life say, you're going to eat. Oh, sorry, I had a phone call there. All right, so we have 12h plus 6k. So let's go ahead and do some distributive property here. We got 3 times 2k, which is a total of 6k, and 3 times 4h, which is a total of 12h. Through the commutative property, 12h plus 6k is equivalent to 6k plus 12h, just like a plus b equals b plus a, which is the commutative property. All right, that works. So guess what? I'm going to select that guy. All right, then we're going to distribute here. 3 times 4k is 12k, and 3 times 2h is a total of 6h. And this right here, it does not match. Okay, the 12s match, okay, but this the, the letters do not, so this does not work. We had to have the exact same letters, all right? So we had 6K, we had 6K. We have 12H, we have 12H. Here, these do not, these expressions do not match. So on this one, I'm only going to choose A, all right? And that's basically what you're doing on this. You're going to have to work them all out and see which ones match and which ones do not. Do not. If they match, they're equivalent. If they don't match, they're not equivalent. Hope that was helpful, and hopefully you guys can solve all these on your own. Have a good day.